Well, amen. It's good to be in church. Amen. Hmm. If you would please take your Bibles over to Psalm chapter number 19. Psalm chapter number 19. We've been in this chapter for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if you ever think I move too slowly through the scriptures, I just want to remind you about the pastor that preached through the book of Psalms, chapter number 23, for 10 years, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, every single service. And so, hallelujah. And we're not there yet, but who knows what will happen. <laughs> And so the Lord is good. Amen. Psalm chapter number 19, we're going to look at verse number 11. Verse number 11 tonight. The Bible says in verse number 11, Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. You are an awesome God and a powerful God. I pray, Lord, that you just work and move in our hearts and lives. Lord, I pray you would put a hedge of protection about us. I pray you'd bind the devil and his imps driving far from this place. I pray, dear God, that you would just help us to set aside the affairs of this life for just a short time now as we enter into your word. And I pray, Father, that your spirit would have free reign to work and move in our hearts and lives. I pray you to help each one of us to allow you to do what needs to be done. And Lord, I pray to your God that you'd work and move as only you can. You're an awesome God and a powerful God. Thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray, the power of his blood we plead. Amen. And so last week we looked at the treasure and the pleasure of God's word. And there is still yet something in addition to the value of God's word and the caution and the compensation of God's Word is as valuable, if not more so. And so let's take a look at the value. And uh, first thing I want you to notice with me in verse number 11, I want you to see the caution of God's Word, the caution of God's Word. Verse number 11, it says, Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Is thy servant warned? And so the first thing I want you to notice is, is the warning of God's word. You know, the word of God from Genesis to Revelation has warning after warning after warning after warning. And the word of God, as, as there's these songs that are sung, there's the song about the lighthouse, and the lighthouse is obviously something that shines a light that spins, amen? And it's a warning to ships that are coming by, especially back in the day before they had all this sonar and navigation stuff that they have today the technology, and it was to warn ships of the danger of the rocks in that area so that they wouldn't crash and have shipwreck. Amen? And the Word of God is like that lighthouse. It's a warning system. The Word of God is like the, the caution signs on the road. Sharp turn ahead, slow down, uh, bridge out, those kind of things. Construction ahead and uh, all of those kind of things. Just like the lights on a siren, an ambulance, or the lights on a police car. Uh, uh, those things are warnings to us. And so the Word of God is as those things. It's a warning to us about these type of things in our life. And so the warnings of the Word of God. Go to Proverbs chapter number 6 with me. Proverbs chapter number 6. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. Moreover. And this really can kind of be taken as in addition to or even more so than... And so it can be taken in that way as well. Proverbs chapter number 6, if you would please. In addition to or mo moreover, or uh, even more so is one of the phrases uh, that was in the definition of that word moreover, even more so, and uh, even more so than the fact that it's, it's better than silver and gold, it's better, it's sweeter than honey and all of those things. Moreover, it uh, by them is thy servant warned. And so there's great uh, value in being warned about impeding danger. Would, would, would you not agree with me? It's good to be able to avoid things. Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 22, if you would please. Look at what it says. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, uh, uh, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. 
And so, and it's talking about my son, keep my father's commandments and forsake not the law of my mother, bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. And verse number 23, look at what it says, uh, and it shall talk with thee. Uh, verse number 23, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of what? life. And so when it goes on to go into these warnings, it'll keep you from all of these different things and whatnot. And so it, it's a matter of warning. It's instruction for life. It's instruction in the right way to avoid the wrong ways of life. And so we see in Matthew chapter number three, verse number seven, John the Baptist there, we looked at this not too long ago, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? In other words, he knew that they weren't warned by the proper thing, like to be the word of God, the spirit of God, those kind of things that would warn us. Are you with me? He understood that they were vipers. They, he understood that they were snakes. He understood that these Pharisees and these Sadducees, they were coming just to really most likely cause problems <laughs> and to question and to try and corner him in his words. And so when you look at this, he says, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? And there is a wrath to come. There is a price to pay for wrongdoing. And the word of God is a warning to us that should be heeded. Acts chapter number 20, verse number 31 and 32. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The Apostle Paul speaking to the, the local New Testament church, and he's saying, by the space of three years, day and night, I warned you. And he's talking about these wolves that would enter in and devour the flock of God. These warnings that the Word of God gives us as we read the Bible, and, and we ought to heed what it says. These warnings. Listen, you see a, a ship coming to shore. There was a story that Julie just told me about, Mrs. Frost told me about, about the Titanic that she had never heard before. She was listening to uh, uh, Brother Ray's radio station, listening to a preacher, and this was the preacher that was really like redneck, right? And uh, I'm pretty sure he was the redneck guy and he was talking so slow and I was like, wow. And so anyways, he was chatting. He talked about the, the, the story of the Titanic that is not really that well known, but they were warned ahead of time about the iceberg in their path. And the captain of the ship ignored the warning and said, you can't sink this ship. And that was the story. It was in the papers. Not even God can sink the Titanic. First voyage. Hello, you're asking for trouble. And so yeah, I'm telling you right now, and those are the stories, that, and no wonder the man went down with the ship. I wouldn't want to be accountable for all those people that died and have to face judgment for that, which most likely he did, just not in this world. And so as we look at this, we see this. It's a scary thing. God's word is a warning. And so 1 Corinthians 4, 14, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Now we talked about the book of 1 and 2 Corinthians being books of rebuke to that church because the church had so many messes. We talked about that this past Sunday morning. And so he was writing these things not because he wanted to shame them, not because of any of those kind of things, not because he was trying to get the best of them, or to prove them that he was right and they were wrong. But that they were his sons and he loved them. He warned them for those things. If you ever think that I'm in this pulpit just trying to get you, your heart's not right. Because I'm here to tell you the reason I preach what I preach and say what I say is because I'm trying to warn you what the Word of God says. Not because I think I'm smarter or better or, or more intelligent or because I th everything has to be Jim's way. No, that's not the way it is at all. What it is is this is what the Bible says, and you need to heed those warnings because otherwise there is a consequence when you don't. 
And so 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, go there with me, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. The more I grow in Christ, the more I recognize the Word of God is not to be toyed with. It's really a very, very scary thing. Look at verse number 14, if you would please. Verse number 14, chapter number 5 of 1 Thessalonians. If you're there, say amen. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are what? Comfort the feeble mind and support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Exhort, uh, 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 brethren, warn them that are unruly. And boy, those are people that are uh, out of control, but also people that cannot be ruled. Go over to Timothy with me. Let me just show you this. First Timothy. I want you to see in 1 Timothy, people just, I'll tell you, today in our society, we live in such a rebellious, prideful society. It is just unbelievable how rebellious and prideful people are today. And I don't stand up here on my authority. I don't stand up here on any of those kind of things. I want you to look at chapter number 3 of 1 Timothy. This is the qualification for elders and deacons, and this is the elders talking about the pastor of the church. That's another word for pastor is elder. Another word for pastor is also bishop. And so if you would scroll on down, verse number 5, for if a man know not how to what? Rule his own house, how shall be he take care of the church of what? If basically what that verse is saying, if he can't rule his own home, the comparison between the home and the house of God, the pastor is also supposed to rule at the church. Are you with me? Like a, a, a king would rule a kingdom. And so, and that's just what the Bible says. Go over to Hebrews chapter number 11. I don't even know why I'm getting into this, but it just kind of happened. Hebrews, or no, not 11, chapter number, uh, last chapter, verse, chapter number 13. And if you think I'm wrong about what it says in, in 1 Timothy chapter number 3, this, this really backs it up very well. Chapter number 13 and verse number 17. Look at what it says in verse number 17. If you're there, say amen. amen. Obey them that have the what? Rule. Rule over you. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your what? As they must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for them, for you. For you. It's unprofitable for you. And so I don't uh, run the things around the church. You know, there's a set of standards that we have. I believe they're very biblical in order to minister, to serve, to do the things around the church. The reason we have those things in place is because I do believe it is Bible. And so, and I do uphold those things, those guidelines, those rules, those standards, whatever you want to call them. I uphold those things on purpose because I believe it's what God would have us to do. And sometimes I think people get very frustrated with me and upset with me when I hold those lines and they feel like I'm picking on them. I'm not picking on them. I am holding the line. Amen. And so and that's what needs to happen. So as we see this in this passage, this matter of warning, this matter of warning, this matter of, of, of warning those that are unruly. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 7, by faith, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 7. If you want to look at that, you can. Now I'm going to break this down a little bit. By faith, Noah, he had to believe what God said. And if you think that building a massive ark to hold two of every animal, are you with me? And then I think there were seven of certain types, uh, birds and stuff, seven of certain types. And so two of every, and all of this, and build this massive ship when it had never even rained before. And God said, I'm going to flood the world. It's going to rain. What's rain, Lord? 
and what's a flood? <laughs> and, and, and not only that, what's an ark? Are you with me? And so he did this by what? Faith. Being warned of who? God. Now listen to this. By faith, put your name there. Are you building the proverbial ark that God wants you to build as God warns you about certain things in the scriptures? Are you with me? Now listen, this is why a lot of people attack our actions and our standards. Because just like Noah condemned the world by building this ark, the way we live condemns them as well. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Because of the standards and, the, and the, the, the things that we follow that we believe are Bible, it condemns the world. And so this is true. We don't drink booze. And when somebody offers you a beer and you say, I don't drink, I'm a Christian, they are condemned oh, yes. and they feel condemned. Yes. Good pastor. Good. Are you with me? Good. When somebody, when I walk up, it used to be in the day, it's not as much as it used to be, but there used to be a day when I would walk up and introduce myself as Pastor Frost all around Baptist Church. If somebody had a cigarette, they'd either throw it on the ground and stomp it out or hide. They used to, I mean, so many times I'd see somebody, they'd hide it behind their back and the smoke's coming up behind their back. And I'm just like, you know, like, do you see what I'm saying? But because they knew there was a standard there. And you know what? This is what a lot of this CCM Christian crowd has done, contemporizing the preacher where he comes up here with an unbuttoned polo shirt or a long sleeve shirt with it down to here, showing his chest hair with ripped up jeans and, and spiked colored hair and all this other craziness. It has taken away the reverence for God's man, that respect. And there ought to be respect for that office. Amen. But when you put people and willingly put people, it's kind of like uh, some of the kings in the Old Testament uh, in the book of uh, First and Second Chronicles where they would take the lowest of the people, some of the kings would, would take the lowest of the people and put them office of the pastor. People that didn't have any kind of a, a standard in their life, didn't know anything about the Bible. And when I say the lowest of the people, I'm talking about people that were just murderers and thieves and putting those people in office. Would you be okay if your pastor was a murderer and a thief? Would you be okay that every other word that came out of my mouth, I told you a lie? Do you see what I'm saying? And so as we look at this, we see in this passage this matter of, of, of uh, obeying and doing what God warns us about and following through with that. And Noah, being warned of God of things not, yet, not seen as yet, Sometimes you may not understand why God commands something or why God says that we ought to not do something and we ought to do something. But because he feared God, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Amen. And listen, you better just obey God whether you understand it or not, whether you can explain it or not. You don't have to understand everything. If God says it, that should settle it in your life. Amen? And what you do not know the consequences of not obeying those things that you do not yet understand. Can I get a witness? And so as we look at this, and you could just stay on Hebrews eleven seven 7 for a long, long time. And so Colossians chapter number 1, go there with me. Colossians chapter number 1. Colossians chapter number 1. What did I say? My nose is giving me a little bit of an issue, and so I got a little bit of something going on in there. Thank you, Kristen. And, uh, but anyways, <laughs> probably hasn't got anything to do with her. And so anyways, um, Ray was a little stuffed up for a day too. And, uh, but anyways, and, and that stuffed upness makes me sound funny. And so anyways, God is good. Maybe I sound funny anyways. I don't know. Verse number 27. Look at it with me. Verse number 27, Colossians chapter number 1. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, where? The hope of glory. Whom we preach, what? Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom 
that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You know what the great desire of your pastor is? Is that I would be able to present Solid Rock Baptist Church and her membership to the Lord Jesus Christ perfect. Perfect. In order to do that, I have to preach on the things that are not comfortable to preach on or easily and readily accepted and applied. Can I get a witness? And so as we see this, we see uh, 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 in Colossians 1, 27 and, and 28, uh, we preach Jesus. Why? To warn men. And then go over to Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. Warning. The warning of the Word of God. God's caution sign. Matthew chapter number 24, look at verse number 24 and 25. Verse number 24 of Matthew 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Amen? Verse number 25, Behold, I have told you before. I have told you before. There's a lot of false Christs and antichrists and false prophets and, and false teachers in the world today. They're all over the place. And so you must, listen, and the reason... Uh, the Bible just, uh, I mean, the, I preached a message on false prophets and all that other stuff one time, and, and there is so many scriptures that warn us about these things that we must be so careful who that we allow to influence our lives. Well, you know, just uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Well, I've heard that saying a thousand times, and I've heard that in an approving way. You know, when it comes to reading books that aren't uh, just KJV or comes to reading books that may have a little bit of false teaching in it, well, just eat the meat and spit out the bones. The problem is, is I don't know about you, but my meat grew on my bones. Are you with me? And so the, it's not just the bones that are bad. It's the meat. It's contaminated. It grows on the bones. And so you've got to be careful. Some of these popular lady speakers, they call themselves preachers. God help us. There is no women preachers. The Bible says if a man desire the office of a bishop, if a man, are you with me? There is nowhere in the Bible that puts approval for women to pastor churches or to be an evangelist. Are you with me? Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible. And so they're, they're, the, the Bible's clear about this matter. Women are not supposed to usurp authority, and women are not to be teachers of men. Very clearly says this in 1 Timothy chapter number 2. And so as we look at this and we see this, these, these listen, I'm not against like Mrs. Frost teaching ladies. doesn't say ladies can't teach ladies. As a matter of fact, the Bible approves of ladies teaching ladies. Are you with me? You can find that over in Titus. And so when it comes to this matter, I'm not going to have Mrs. Frost come up here and, and then teach a lesson to the entire church. This is also the reason why I personally would never have a woman choir director over a men's and women's choir or a men's choir. Just not going to happen because she is leading them in leadership. And that is not God's order. Are you with me? And so it's not that, listen, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to point out the fact that our society is totally upside down. The Bible's very clear that God has designed these roles. You want to know what's going on? If, listen, and I've said this a thousand times, but I'm going to say it again tonight. If, if this other form of Christianity was so great, then why is our country in worse shape than it's ever been in? If this so-called, which is super popular, this so-called Christian music that's on the radio stations in the top 10 charts and all of these things, listen, if it was so great, then how come our country is in worse shape than it's ever been? If these mega churches with these slicky boy preachers and, and these, these uh, uh, really, uh, uh, really, in my opinion, abrasive, loud women that are preaching like men preach, 
If, if that is so great, then how come our country is not in better shape than it is? Because you take a majority of our country and they'll say they're Christian. But then when you start asking them about what Christian means, and these majority of these people go to these kind of churches, and when you start asking them, they haven't got the slightest idea. That's right. They don't know. That's right. It's crazy. It's crazy today what's happening. And so everything is flipped around and upside down in our society, just as the Bible predicted would be in these end times, these perilous times that the Bible talks about. And so as we jump into this, this warning, these false Christs, these false prophets, these deceivers, that's what they are. And he says, behold, I have, I have told you before. I have warned you about this. And so the word of God is from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 is loaded with warnings. And why? Because God's trying to make us miserable, trying to keep track of all these things? No, because he wants us to be safe, happy, and prosperous in Christ. Amen? <laughs> Listen, don't tell somebody you love them and then you know that they're going to do something that's going to end up getting their hand cut off and you don't stop them. Are you with me? I don't know about you, but I like my right hand. Do you like your right hand? You know what? I, I'm right-handed. I really like my left hand, too. I wouldn't want to lose that one either. Amen? And so as we look at this, if you really care about somebody, you're going to stop them from doing something stupid. And so and this is, this, is, this is really my job idea. Hey, tell people not to do stupid things. That's my criteria. Tell them what the Bible says. And so as we look at this, we see this warnings... Warnings, the Word of God and warnings. Look at some warnings, some basic verses there. They're kind of catch-alls. They're kind of catch-alls. These are, these are catch-alls of the Word of God. Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 7. You know the passage. Be not deceived. God is not what? Mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so we see in that passage, God is warning us. Hey, listen, be careful what you sow. Because what you sow, you will grow. Amen? And so look at this. We see that warning. Ephesians chapter number 5, verses 10 and 11. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Are you, are you with me? No fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. This is a warning from the Word of God. He says, prove all things. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, where it talks about warning those unruly, unruly people. Verse number 21 and 22, a little bit further into the chapter. Prove all things. And then what? Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it even appears to be evil, just don't have anything to do with it. Abstain from it. Prove everything and hold fast that which is good. The things you prove and you find, hey, this is good, hold fast to it. Listen, but if it even appears to be evil, whether it's evil or not, but if it appears to be, abstain from it. Are you with me? And so we see these things. Titus chapter number 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. What are we supposed to do? Deny it. Not just ignore it, but deny it. Don't just live around it and act like it doesn't exist or that it's not wrong just because you don't partake of it. He says, deny it. Are you with me? Denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. These are warnings. These are warnings from the Word of God. These are just some generic warnings that are just basically kind of encompassing all things. Hey, listen, what you sow, you're going to reap. Listen, prove what is acceptable, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. 
And listen, you go through the Bible and you can define what that unfruitful works of darkness is. You can define what those things are and where to reprove them. You can see all these warning, warnings in the Word of God. There's a ton of them. I could spend weeks on weeks just preaching warnings from God's Word. Part number one. Part number 5,652. Are you with me? I could spend the rest of my life preaching the warnings of God. And so we see this so vitally important. Not only do we see uh, the, the warnings of God's word, but also be the requirement in God in order, the requirement in order to receive the warning. Come on, come on. Go back to our text with you. I want you to see this. Good. This is vitally important. Psalm chapter number 19, verse number 11. Moreover, by them is what? Thy servant warned thy servant warned you know i believe a lot of times i've warned people about things in in church people that are members people that have been here for a while and i warned them and yet they do not heed them i believe the reason is is because they are not a servant of god and it says, and by them thy servant is warned. In order to be right with God, you must serve God. You must serve Him. I'm not talking about doing the things that benefit you. I'm talking about doing something that benefits Him. Amen? Serving Him. I'm talking about doing things for Him. I'm not talking about doing the things for you. Coming to church is not for Him. Though it is commanded. Coming to church is for you. You come here and you sing and you hear preaching and have opportunities to get right with God. Serving Him is doing something for Him doing something for God. And so, you know, when it talks about these different kind of things, tithing is not serving the Lord. Are you with me? The tithe is the Lord's. That belongs to Him. You're just putting it back where it belongs. Amen? And so this matter of tithes and offerings. He says, where any of you rob me? Tithes and offerings. So God does expect you to give offerings. Are you with me? And so serving, giving can be serving the Lord by giving more in areas. By doing more. Serving the Lord can be helping around the church with projects and things that we do. Setting tables, cooking food, cooking food for, for the fellowship so other people can eat the food. Are you with me? It's serving the Lord. Bringing things, doing different things. Holding signs downtown. You know, I mean, you benefit from serving the Lord. It's an amazing thing that you get to benefit and you get rewards and all of these things from serving the Lord. But holding a sign downtown that you believe, it does help you in boldness and all of those things. But it's not really for you. It's for others, amen? It's so that you can say, hey, you need what I got, amen? And you know what I got? I got Jesus. Yeah. And so that's serving the Lord, witnessing and handing out gospel tracts and those kind of things. Yes, you're obeying commands of God to do this, but that is serving the Lord. Can I get a witness? And so, and all of those things, serving God and being a servant to God and ministering to other people for the cause of Jesus Christ, that's serving the Lord. And that's what they call it. Teaching a Sunday school class is serving the Lord. Ushering is serving the Lord. Being a greeter at the door is serving the Lord. Uh, uh, and, and all of those kind of things, doing office work, all of these kind of things, counting the offering, all of this stuff is serving the Lord. Playing the piano, leading the singing, all of this stuff, rolling the chairs, amen, that's serving the Lord. Are you with me? And so service to God, the requirement in order to receive the warning. Proverbs 22, 3, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. 
if you're going to receive these warnings and be able to hide yourself from the evil and receive the warnings that God gives, you must be a servant of God. 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verses 24 and 25, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle. Listen, go to Psalm chapter number 15 with me. Just turn it back a little bit here. We've already looked at this psalm, but I just want to touch this. And we're almost there. Psalm chapter number 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He says, these are the people that are going to be able to do that. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth. Where? In his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. Are you with me? But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that answereth to his own hurt and changeth what? Just. Listen, when it comes to these matters, just don't change. Stand upon your God. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. That's the kind of man God is talking about. Psalm uh, 101, David said this, Mine eye shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. These people that do this, they walk in a perfect way. They're faithful. These people do serve God. Are you with me? They shall. That's what happens. And so Luke chapter number 12, verse number 43, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing being busy for his work. Go over to uh, James chapter number one. You know where I'm going. James chapter number one. James chapter number one, servant of the Lord. Moreover, by them, his servant is warned. James chapter number one. The Bible says in verse number 22, but be ye doers of the word. And not hearers only, what? Deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a what? forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be what? Blessed in his deed. The caution of God's word. Then I want you to see the compensation of God's word. Go back to our text. Psalm chapter number 19. We're going to wrap it up really quickly. I just got a few verses for this portion. Psalm chapter number 19. Psalm chapter number 19 it says he's going to be blessed. The, the compensation of God's word. God's word offers great reward. It says, moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is what? Great reward. Not just a reward, but great reward. Would you say that obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and getting eternal life for all of eternity, not deserving it. Do you think that's a great reward? Amen, uh, amen right there. Amen. You, you heeded the warning about going to hell and accepted the truth that you needed to be saved and you got born again. Amen. And now you've got an eternal life 
in heaven with Jesus. I think that's a pretty great reward, amen? And not only is that a great reward, but also the fact the things you do for God in this life in service to him, it gets counted as treasure in heaven. And that is a treasure that you can't spend, you can't use up, it'll never run out, it'll never rust, it'll never corrode, it'll never break, amen? You ever get a trophy for doing something and it fell off the shelf and it broke? You can drop this trophy all over the place it'll never break amen listen it'll always look like it's absolutely brand new and never go bad now that's a pretty good deal just because i heeded the warnings of god proverbs eleven eighteen: the wicked worketh a deceitful work but to him that soweth we talked about sowing and reaping right soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward so that, be, don't be deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also what? Hey, you get to, that, 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 that road goes both ways. You can go the wrong way on that one way, and you can get some bad rewards. But if you go the right way on that one way that God has set up, and you sow the righteous stuff, you're going you're gonna to reap righteousness for all of eternity. Now that is some great rewards. Proverbs chapter number 29, verse number 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, I don't know about you, but by, hey, listen, keeping it, there's great reward. Listen, one of the great rewards about obeying God and staying true to his word and sticking to the church and doing what's right and being in the right place at the right time, doing the right things at the right time. And, and listen, there is such an incredible peace that passes all understanding. And it's not just a peace like a peace pipe or a peace dude. It's a peace in your heart and in your mind. Peace is a wonderful thing to have peace when everything in your life is falling apart is just an incredible blessing Amen. to be able to step back and say wow <laughs> now this has got to be the worst mess i've ever seen ever and you know what god is all good however i don't know how this is all going to work out in the end but praise be to god it's because of him. Amen. That's like those old martyrs that you read about in Fox's Book of Martyrs, how some of those people in there just had such incredible peace while they were being tortured for the cause of Jesus Christ. And how that even through all of that, there were testimonies of some of those men and women that while they were being tortured, I'm talking beat, skin ripped off, stretched on a rack, whipped and lashed, and, and the whole time they're saying, please don't stop. His presence is so real. The peace and the, they didn't feel the pain. They felt the presence a peace that passes. I don't know about you, but if somebody starts beating on me, I'm like, whoa, cut it out. That hurts. Are you with me? But these that were being beaten for the cause of Jesus Christ, they had great peace and great presence from God. And I'm telling you, I don't think you can really put a price tag on that. To know that no matter what comes and goes... God's in control. And I'm just going to accept what he has for my life and allow him to do what needs to be done. Peace. What a great reward of heart and mind. That calm of heart and mind that only can come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we see here, uh, uh, God's word offers great reward, but only to those that keep it. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Do you want the peace? You better keep God's commandments. As Jesus said, if you love me, keep my what? You scroll on down through chapter number 14 and you read those things and you're going to find out that as because you loved him, God the Father is going to love you. 
I'm thinking that's a pretty great Amen. reward. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And when you look at this and you scroll on down through there and it talks about, and he's going to be with me and I'm going to be with him. Yes. What a tremendous reward to know that we have God in us and with us wherever we go. But only those that keep them. James 1.25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and what? Continueth therein. Are you with me? Continueth therein. He being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Proverbs 29, 18, once again, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is Amen. he. Amen. It's a joy. Hey, listen. Um, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Are you with me? That's, the, that's a Bible verse, by the way, not just a song. And so as we look at this, listen, by keeping it, hey, listen, there's peace, but there's also great joy that comes with it. Proverbs 19, 16, he that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. Just trust God. Listen, you don't have to understand everything. But boy, I'll tell you what, you'll be some kind of blessed when you get to the place where you're just going to trust Him. Amen. Where you're just going to obey what He says, regardless of the consequences that appear to be there. Sometimes we think because of the consequences of talking to a certain person about the Lord, I'm going to get my head ripped off, or I'm just going to be embarrassed because I'm not exactly sure how to answer certain questions. Listen, you don't have to know everything. Amen. The truth of the matter is the biggest impact you're going to have is that you care enough about a person to warn them. And not only that, that's just doing what God wants you to do. And when you do suffer persecution for Christ's sake, He takes great notice. And there is great reward for somebody who's willing to do that. Good. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Good. Listen, the caution and the compensation... The caution and the compensation. Listen. <laughs> the cost of serving God. It's almost embarrassing to even say there is a cost. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. It's really kind of embarrassing. But, but, but the compensation far outweighs the cost. Just heeding those warnings and just being warned of God. Just the fact that God, just that right there tells us that God loves us because He warns us about these things. He warns us to stay away from certain things. He warns us about these false prophets, these false teachers. He warns us about all of these different things, this wickedness and this violence. He warns us. Man, heed those warnings and enjoy Listen, enjoy the peace that will follow. If there's areas of your life that you've been resisting in because you may not agree with it or you just don't understand the why, listen, I promise you, I'm not going to ask you to do something that's not right according to the Bible. And when I preach it, I, I really truly do believe that just about everything, if not everything I preach, is very clear from the Scriptures. I'm not trying to be a lord, over God's, a lord over God's heritage. You don't see me showing up at your house, coming through and saying, oh, pick that up, put it in the trash, that's no good. Oh, you need to go to the store and you need to pick this up and put this in your... I'm not lording over God's heritage. But I am warning and pleading. Please obey God. When you don't do right by God, there is always a, a bad consequence involved. You do reap what you sow. Are you able to receive the warnings of God? Would you be able to classify yourself as a servant? Do you recognize the great rewards of God's Word? you got to receive them and you got to keep them. Father, we sure do love you. We praise you for your goodness and grace. I pray you bless the invitation now. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. The piano's playing. If you need to come, you come on. Let God have his way. Come talk to the Lord. 
Come talk to the Lord. If you can kneel at the altar, kneel at the altar. If you can't, take a seat on the front row. Amen. Come talk to the Lord. Let him have his way in your heart and life. If God spoke to your heart, don't resist the Spirit of God.